بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد uh, We continue with the journey to the hereafter series and we are still speaking about the hellfire May Allah Azza wa save myself and your souls from the hellfire and subhanAllah the importance of the hellfire طبعا always comes up as we spoke in the introduction the first list and the second list and the third and we'll continue inshaAllah Azza wa to speak about it by an example that came uh, yesterday I believe uh, a person who is not a Muslim anymore uh, They left Islam Taban, why did they leave Islam? There's no reason they left Islam There's no reason where they have a wrong or a fault with the Sharia That they say this proves that Islam is wrong It's just that they had some issues And they said I'm going to run away from it all And I'm going to leave Islam That way if I, I'm not Muslim I don't have to do with those issues one of the points that they mentioned was that they're agnostic. So they do believe that there's a creator. They believe that something exists. They don't know what it is, they don't, but they don't know what to do with, about it either. So I replied back to the person that for a person to be agnostic, okay, it's a start. Let him figure out his way to Islam being the truth. That's not a problem, but it's a start. But from the time that he left Islam until now, and it's been many years, what has he done in search for that truth? Ayyadun Billah, if he was to die upon that belief, that he believes something exists but he doesn't affirm that it is Islam, he doesn't believe that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where does this person end up, Ayyadun Billah? This person ends up in a hellfire. I told him, even if you were a person who believed that there was something out there that needs to be worshipped, and you have the ability now, but you never search for it, you don't care about it, you're not worried about it. Yani, are you looking for the truth? Are you looking for that which is right? Or you don't care in which you will have to do with the consequences, no matter what religion it is. No matter what truth there is in the hereafter for you. You will have to do with the consequences because you didn't worship any law. This simple fact that this person believes that there's something out there, this is when we get to warning people with the whole fire is what many of the prophets are sent with and no one likes to think of the hereafter in that manner that there is a hereafter and that if there is a hereafter there's a reward and there's a punishment and if that punishment is there I need to prepare myself to make sure that I don't end up in that punishment and this is what got a lot of the disbelievers when they would be faced with the Prophet to wake up to themselves, to hold themselves accountable, to say, what am I doing with my life and where am I going to end up? When the non-Muslims of today think about the hereafter, no one ever thinks of the hellfire. No one ever, 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 ever thinks of the hellfire for, from the non-Muslims. No, I'm not talking about the religious ones, I'm talking about the ones who are living their lives as if yani, you have an open book, do whatever you want, everything is halal, and uh, when you die, Automatically they believe you're in a better place. Automatically. Person dies, yani, let's say, say he was Christian. If he's never been to the church in his life, he committed every sin there is in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the New Testament. He committed every sin that a person can imagine. He never prayed, he never asked for forgiveness, never done anything good. Automatically when he dies, it's okay, he's in a better place. He's in a better place. He's in a, thank you. You have a paradise and you have the hellfire. Which type of people do you get to the hellfire? Which type of people do you get to the hellfire? No one gets to the hellfire for these people. And part of that is what leads to them not caring about what the consequences are in the hereafter. If everyone dies and they get salvation, or everyone dies and God is loving, or everyone dies and, as uh, I've repeated so many times, that, that one bus driver said, You know, I'll figure it out when I get there. Uh, or everyone dies and thinks, I'm going to speak to God and we're going to work something out and he's going to enter me to the paradise. Mm -hmm. oh, there's, no, there's no fear of the hellfire. And if there's no fear of the hellfire, then there isn't much reason for you to fix your life now in this dunya. When we look at what the Prophet ﷺ were told to do, and in turn what we're told to do, it's to call the people to Allah Azza wa Jal by giving them the glad tidings of paradise and warning them of the torment in the hellfire. And if a person doesn't have this balance of want for the reward in the paradise and fear of the punishment in the hellfire, 
then they will always billah, lead, they will always live a life of sin and uh, non-uprightness. Because it doesn't work. If I'm not worried, I'm going to do whatever I want. And whatever I want, it's going to be what the nafs wants. And what the nafs wants, unless it's trained, which is a higher level of religion, but the nafs wants is going to be that which is incorrect. Allah Musta'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn your close tribes. This is the beginning of the da'wah. When we begin our da'wah, when we begin according to Allah Azza wa Jal, who do we call first? The Prophet says, فَسَكُمْ وَأَلِيكُمْ نَرَى Save yourself and your families from the whole fire. Then you expand on that. You expand from that. You, your family, your uh, community, the you know, distant relatives, the society that you live in, the country that you live in, you expand from the people that the Prophet ﷺ was directly warned was his uh, close, the close tribes that were around him. What was his warning? That in dar, what was that warning? The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, uh, stands up as Abu Hurairah mentions, and he called Quraysh. That Rasulullah ﷺ Quraysh and He called Quraysh, and so they all came. And so he would call them tribe by tribe. He would call them tribe by tribe. And what was his advice to them? Save your souls from the hellfire. That was his warning to them, alayhi salatu wasalam. Warn your souls from the hellfire. He would call the tribe. And then he would say, save your souls from the hellfire. For example, yeah. Yeah, ya bani Ka'ab ibn Lu'ay. Anqidu anfusakum min al-nar. Ya bani Mur ibn Ka'ab. Anqidu anfusakum min al-nar. Ya Bani Abdu Shams, Ankid Anfusakum Min Al Nar. He's calling them by tribe, each one, each one, each one, and he's warning them is save yourself from the whole fire. In this is a very important lesson. That when we want to call our families to Islam, we need to to the right path, even if they are already Muslims, but to the following of Islam, we need to again bring that balance of both. There are times when we call them and we mention the paradise. But there, there also needs to be a mention of the whole fire. Uh, what was yesterday? Yesterday was Tuesday. Yesterday, I received a very upsetting phone call of, uh, you know, from one of my friends regarding a girl in their family. She's a good girl. She's you know, good-natured. She's well-mannered. You know, she's a, a nice girl, mashallah. And she fell into some wicked and sick sins. Okay? She fell into these sins. And you know, he's talking and he's mentioning things. And I'm not surprised in the least. I'm not surprised in the least. What leads to her and so many others like her falling into these sins from amongst the Tabanis? There's a million reasons. From amongst those reasons is there isn't a any presence of the whole fire in their minds. The reason them thinking this act, what is it going to lead me to? Is this act worth me committing now and getting a few minutes of pleasure or getting my 15 minutes of fame? And then Ayyadun Billah possibly end up in the whole fire because of it. That presence of the whole fire is not in their minds. That's why as part of your da'wah, just like the Quran did, just like the Sunnah did, is to constantly be mentioning the paradise and the hellfire. Why did Allah Azza wa constantly mention the paradise? Jannat, Jimmy Tahtiya and now. And why is he constantly mentioning now? Adab, Alim, and the like. So that it stays present in our minds. So that we have that motivation to do good and that want to stay away from the hellfire, that punishment. Even the Prophet mentions as he came to the end of this narration, Ya Fatima bint Muhammad, Anki di nafsaki min al nar. Oh Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Save your soul from the hellfire This needs to be our da'wah To our young uh, children also Don't just do an act Because people uh, can see you But then behind closed doors you do something else You have that presence of mind You have the consciousness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala You have the consciousness of the reward and the punishment Why? What's the point? What's the reason? Prophet ﷺ continues, فَإِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Because I can benefit you nothing with Allah Azza wa Jal. This is who talking? The best of the best, the Prophet ﷺ himself. 
if the Prophet is not given permission to intercede for Abu Bakr, he's not able to. The intercession on the Day of Judgment only happens with the permission of Allah Azza wa It only happens with the permission of Allah Azza wa So when a person feels safe from the punishment of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, it's very easy for him to transgress. They didn't estimate Allah Azza wa a right estimation. They didn't give him that respect, that honor that he deserves. Part of that is through not fearing the capabilities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he's prepared as a punishment. From the traits of the believers and those who have sound logic and reasoning and understanding is that they seek refuge in the hellfire. And we mentioned this last week. We mentioned this last week. We mentioned the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ مَنْ تُدْخِلِ النَّارَ فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْتَ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارٍ That verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the, uh, the differing between the night and the day are signs to the الْأَلْبَابِ Those who have sound mind and reason and understanding الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا those who uh, uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, standing and sitting and on their side and they think and they ponder about the creation of the heavens and the earth Rabbana, they make dua Rabbana, our, uh, our Lord you did not create this Beltran, for no reason Subhanaka faqin a'adhab al-nar yani, uh, far raised are you from any imperfection save us from the whole fire this is the dua save us from the hell fire O oh, our Lord, verily the one who you enter into the hellfire, you have humiliated. And the oppressors have no one to give them victory. Why I re-mentioned this is because of that hadith that we just mentioned. Those who remember Allah Azza wa standing and sitting and on their sides. What's this referring to? Is it literally any yani, the ones who mention Allah standing and sitting and on their sides? Is this what it's literally speaking about? Or is there another... Is there another meaning? This is alluding to another meaning. It doesn't matter if you seek or... Like, I think it'd be It's both, Sheikh. Like, so, so, yeah. Whatever that, it is. A, a subconscious of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah, meaning a person remembers Allah Azza wa Jal at... at any time. time. At all times. <laughs> at all times. Okay? <laughs> a Sufi said this is an ayah that says you, you're left to dhikr. I don't understand the <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course you can do dhikr, but he said using it, you can do dhikr of Allah when you're sitting. Allah, Allah, Allah. That's not how it works. Okay. This is talking about those who remember Allah Azza wa Jal, in no matter what, no matter what state they they may be in. And this is how we need to be. And again, how do you build this consciousness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by learning about Allah Azza wa Jal, learning what the benefits of worshiping Allah are, which are the paradise on top of the benefits in this dunya and the consequences of not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly which at the head of it is the hellfire this allows a person in all of their actions to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly whether they are at work, whether they're getting dressed, whether they're at the shops, whether they're with their friends doesn't matter what they are, what setting they are in, doesn't matter what they're doing they're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many of our children especially we need that first and foremost to be upright ourselves but when we're raising our children and I keep mentioning the children because of that example that happened yani yesterday when we're raising our children this needs to be instilled in them it's not about me, it's not about me, your dad and are you embarrassed for me or not that's part of it and it's good for you to have haya and modesty but is it limited to me? No never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never forget that the good that you do even if it's small don't belittle any good even if it's you're by yourself and you walk, you say, La ilaha illallah, you say, Astaghfirullah. You're walking, you see someone, you know, there's something on the road, okay? Move it if it's harmful. Someone on the footpath, move it if it's harmful. You know, where you have to the for you to remove harm. This is the loss of your man, it's a part of sadaqah. You see people that are in need, you get a new system, you get a new defend them, like bullies and the like. Instill that in your children that they want to do good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that they have this mindset of, Khalas, I just gotta worry about myself. I'll do what I can, I'll do what makes me happy and I'm not worried about anything else. No, it's not consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Same thing about the bad. Ya, ya Ibn, Ya Binti, my son, my daughter. Don't think that life is just a, a thing that you live, you do whatever you want and there's no consequences. No, be very careful of what you watch, especially with phones. 
especially with their phones. Be very careful of what you watch. Be very careful of who you talk to. Be very careful of how you talk to people. Be very careful of the decisions that you make. Because it's not just about you in this dunya. It's not just about you and living your life and moving on with your life. But rather, this is a, a life in which your actions are recorded and that recording has consequences. For the good is good and for the bad is bad. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned regarding seeking refuge in Allah Azza wa from the hellfire. He says, alayhi salatu wasalam, Man sa'ala Allah al-jannah thalatha marratin qalat al-jannah, Allahumma adkhilhu al-jannah. Wa man istajara min al-nari thalatha marratin qalat al-nar, Allahumma adjilhu min al-nar. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever asks Allah for the paradise three times, so for example, he says, Oh Allah, yani, oh Allah enter me to the paradise. Oh Allah enter me to the paradise. Oh Allah enter me to the paradise. Uh, the paradise actually makes dua and he says, Oh Allah, enter him into the paradise. And whoever seeks refuge from the hellfire three times, the hellfire says, Oh Allah, save him from the hellfire. So if you want the paradise and the hellfire to make dua for you, then ask Allah Azza wa for this paradise and Allah Azza wa inshallah will answer. Ask Allah for this paradise and Allah Azza wa will answer. And ask Allah Azza wa to save you from the hellfire and Allah Azza wa will answer. And again, this is, yani, it's reciprocal. You are asking Allah to save you from the hellfire, which in terms means you are conscious of the hellfire. And when you're conscious of the hellfire, you are staying away from the axe that keep you away from the hellfire. So your man increases. Your iman increases, you're remembering Allah Azza wa more, it's easy for you to worship Allah Azza wa So you make more dua, Allah keep me away from the hellfire. It's reciprocal. Okay, the good leads to good and the bad leads to bad. And the better you can be in that, the more of a chance you have in staying away from the hellfire. May Allah Azza wa save my souls and your souls from the hellfire. Subhanahu wa alhamdulillah, wa wa Now you can go and enjoy your state of origin. Assalamu alaikum wa Sheikh, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Did you not hear?